Hello there and welcome to a very special ITH video. See, I'm here at Aston Martin Cambridge and we're going to look at three of their very special projects that they created along with Aston Martin's Q department. So we're going to take you through all the details of the three cars, we're going to meet the man who created them and if you stick around to the end we're going to get a very sneak preview, in fact a world exclusive of their next project. So I'm here with Simon Lane, who is the dealer principal here at Aston Martin uh, in Cambridge. And I'd like to think is the creative genius behind all these three cars. Um, firstly, thank you very much for having us and letting us look around. Um, and I'd like to start with just asking you, what, what's your passion? What made you start these projects? Um, well, I love cars and I love aeroplanes. Um, and so this was a, a, a really an idea to bring the two together. Um, uh, my father was a fast jet pilot in the Royal Air Force for about 15 years and uh, so I grew up with aeroplanes uh, and cars and I've, I've always been interested in both. Coming into Aston Martin um, there's so many uh, bespoke possibilities via Q um, who are the bespoke arm of the company and um, so I started working with them uh, just over three years ago uh, to, uh, to start creating what you now see behind you. Fantastic. Well, I tell you what, we, we can sit here and talk all day, but I think the most important thing we need to do is to look around these amazing cars. So I think we're going to go around and we're going to see all the amazing details in each one of them. Okay. So we're here with the, I believe this is the Blades. Car? Okay, this, is, this was the first of your projects? It was. Um, so we, we started this project, I went to uh, a corporate event with the Blades uh, about five years ago. I first met the team, they're all former Red Arrows pilots. Um, they fly a highly aerobatic aeroplane called the Extra 300. And they do absolutely incredible displays and they also offer corporate days, so you can go and fly with them. So I got talking to the owner of the team, um, a chap called Andy Offer, um, who used to be leader of the Red Arrows and uh, he was approaching a big birthday and fancied ordering uh, an Aston Martin. Um, so we got talking about the colour scheme of that car and he would like, would like it to be similar to his aircraft. Uh, so one thing led to another and we ended up uh, coming up with the idea of building five cars to match the five aircraft on their team and each car would be paired with one of the aircraft. So each of these cars has a different serial number both inside and outside that matches the team's aeroplanes. Um, and that we would then hand those cars over and use one of their corporate days uh, to deliver the cars so that everybody would then get an amazing flying experience as well as picking their car up. Um, and uh, so we did that um, at their base at Sywell and all five cars were in the hangar together. All the people that bought the cars uh, went up and did a, a full aerobatic routine and flew in formation upside down in these cars. And they did various other things. They flew helicopters and, and had a really fun day. Um, and at the end of the day, we put all the cars on the runway and we captured this amazing shot of the five aeroplanes flying over the five cars with their smoke on. Um, and that really kind of got the ball rolling. So what, what are the key things that, they, that you did to this, to this Blades V8? Okay, so the, the color scheme uh, on the aircraft is silver, black and orange. Um, and we used a similar color scheme. So we've got uh, lightning silver, lightning having been an aeroplane, jet black. <laughs> and inside, you can see that color scheme runs through the inside of the car as well. We have the Blades team logo on the headrests. Um, the Union Jack theme, which is on their aircraft, they have a monochrome Union Jack. That also features on the inside of the car in the centre armrest and uh, it's on the outside of the car on the badges on the, on the wings there. Um, you can see the uh, serial number of uh, this. This is actually Blade 1 and Blade 1's serial number is G-ZEXL. So that's on the outside of the car both on the uh, side strake and on the front splitter and it's then also on the dashboard on the inside of the car. Fantastic. Well, as amazing as this is, We've got to move on. <laughs> on 
onto what I think for me is the most beautiful vantage I think that's ever been created for me. It, the, the colour scheme for me is just is staggeringly good. So tell me about this wonderful Spitfire V12 Vantage, yes. So when we came to the design, well the first thing we talked about was colour because we wanted to do a, a bespoke colour rather than using uh, a colour from the normal colour palette which we did in the Blades car. Mm -hmm. And we came up with this colour which we called Duxford Green. So uh, it's, uh, as you can see, it's very, very dark uh, here in the showroom. When bright light hits it, you can see a lot more of the green uh, come out of it. So it's got a, a Kestrel Tan interior? Yeah, is it? so we chose Kestrel Tan because actually it's an exact match um, in colour to the uh, leather holder for the pilot's notes. So um, it seemed right to go with um, the Duxford Green and then the Kestrel Tan on the interior. Um, and obviously we stitched the, uh, the dashboard um, in the Kestrel Tan as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, we decided uh, this time that we would do something really amazing with the headlining, maybe a bit brave. And we took a uh, Second World War era reconnaissance photograph of Duxford Airfield and we had it printed on leather and then used that leather to then make the headlining in the car. Um, so when you sit in the car and look up, you're effectively looking up at Duxford from above. As if there was a, in a Spitfire doing a barrel roll Correct. or something. <laughs> um, sill plaques, um, we um, had those anodised in cockpit green, so it's the same colour as the interior of the uh, Spitfires is painted. Um, and then there are bespoke plaques on the sill there, and you can see the, the side profile of a Spitfire, mm -hmm. um, which says that the car was built to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the car. So the owner of this car decided to go with N3200, that is the, the aeroplane that's based at Duxford. Uh, it's a genuine Mark I Spitfire, it saw action over Dunkirk, was shot down there and then later repatriated to Duxford in the 1990s um, and restored to fly. Well, that aeroplane uh, did a solo display and then flew over these cars parked on the runway at 300 miles an hour at 40 feet. And uh, we have that footage and, uh, and that photograph. I mean, we, we, you know, we started out with you know, the, the, the slight paint customization we've gone through to a few bespoke features that you've put into this Spitfire one. We have to now move across to Red 10. Yes. And the Red Arrows car. Yep. So this one, this is, this is something else altogether, I think, isn't it? start with it just from standing here it just looks red doesn't it yes but when you get up close it's not <laughs> correct um, so I actually spent one whole day at the factory just selecting the color and the color that we went with um, has a very very fine gold fleck through it so it's not immediately obvious but when you look up close at the paint you can see the gold fleck in the paint the the paintwork um, it's not just the red obviously you can see all the other detailing that's on the outside of this car um, which takes inspiration from the jets and their performances. So the blue and white down the sills that then wraps into the rear of the car is meant to uh, symbolize the smoke from their tail fin, which is at the very front of the car and is, is painted into the, uh, into the front splitter. All the research and development work that went into the paintwork in this car and the physical painting time worked out about 500 hours, 500 man hours per car. Good grief. In, the, in these day, in this day and age of, of, of vehicles getting wrapped at a moment's notice, is that you look at the carbon sills and the, like you say, the, the carbon diffuser at the back, and these areas are painted on top of the, the carbon, on lacquer on carbon, Correct. and then there's lacquered over the top as well. Correct. So it's it's all it's, it's totally smooth to touch, and it's all hidden within the lacquer. It's, it's well, I think it's absolutely stunning. When you, it's only when you really get your head six inches from one of these cars, you actually start to really notice the sheer amount of detail that's yep. gone into it. And then it's got this very special badge, I think, as well. Yeah? Indeed. Um, this badge is uh, reserved for very special Aston Martin models. So it's a Union Jack enamel badge. It's actually made from sterling silver and it's hallmarked by the jeweler that makes them for Aston Martin um, on the top of the badge. Um, and those appear on the front and the rear of the car. Now, the thing that I, that I think is one of the more notable things, other than the obviously beautiful bright colour, is people look at the roof, don't they? Yes. And think, what on earth's going on there? Sure. <laughs> um, so when you look at a Red Arrows Hawk, there's a really, really distinctive feature on the canopy, um, which you see in many fighter jets, and that's um, a detonator cord. And the cord is in the canopy um, in case the pilot ejects. When they pull the ejection handle, the cord that's in the canopy is a small explosive charge. It detonates and it creates a space in the canopy then for the seat to come out. 
And uh, so we realised, looking at the Vanquish, it had this actually this perfect indentation in the carbon fibre roof panel that we could fit that detonator cord shape into the roof. Yeah. Now, in terms of the, I mean, obviously that's very bespoke in terms of the lacquering and the layering and stuff. So with these Arrows cars, you went another level. You went to the point where you've designed a bespoke piece of the car. Correct. So this is the, the uh, where the rear seats would have been. Correct. Um, so every other Vanquish that you look at will have rear seats. Um, in the case of this car, we thought, why don't we have a bit of fun with the rear seats? Um, so we designed a bespoke carbon fibre helmet dock um, uh, in order to fit Aston Martin Racing uh, crash helmets and Aston Martin Racing race suits um, in a shelf sitting underneath. What's special about both the helmets and the race suits is of course they've been designed to emulate the helmets that the Red Arrows team wear so they have exactly the same Red Arrow uh, shape um, across the, uh, the top of the helmet. Um, they also have a bespoke battle formation um, on the side of the helmet for, which is paired with the car. They are standing at the side of the runway when the Red Arrows flew up their runway at 100 feet at 400 knots with their smoke on and flew over the cars parked in battle formation on the runway is a moment I'll never forget. Um, that was just absolutely incredible. I'm sure nobody that was there on the day will ever forget it either. The thing I wanted to, to, to finish up on as a, as a final point on this is what I think, I mean these are all pretty amazing and special, the most amazing and I think really bespoke special part of these is, are, the, um, are they the infotainment dials? They're actually the uh, they're, they're, they're the controls for the climate control system. Okay. Um, so there are, there are two sw switches inside the car which standing here looking at them they just look like regular switches. When you look up close you can see the, the metal is quite mottled and pitted um, and that's because uh, the metal that we used is nearly 40 years old because it came off one of the uh, Red Arrows Hawk jets which had been decommissioned and uh, the Air Force very kindly uh, gave us an undercarriage leg from that jet, um, which we then melted down and created 10 sets of switches, and they now sit in these 10 cars. So there is a genuine piece of Red Arrows jet in all 10 of them. Now, obviously we've done these three cars. Now, I believe you're, you're able to give me a little bit of a sneak preview, aren't you, of, of there is another one coming. There is, um, so ever since we delivered this project really. Um, I've lost count of how many times I've been asked what we're going to do next. I've commissioned another project. Um, it's more than twice the size of the Red Arrows project, so we're upscaling it again and it's going to be even more spectacular and based on the new DBS Superleggera. Um, for the first time we're moving away from aeroplanes, I think we have pretty much reach the pinnacle with the Red Arrows. Yeah, there's um, not much further you can go up really. <laughs> lots of people have suggested we do Concorde and you know, there's a, a myriad of suggestions that have been put to me but um, I felt it was important that we took a break. We've had three projects in a row um, around aircraft and uh, there are other things that I would like to explore. I touched on uh, at the beginning of our interview about the fact that cars are also my other interest and um, Aston Martin have an incredible uh, racing history and past. And so uh, without giving too much detail away, um, you're going to find the next project has got something to do with Aston Martin's illustrious motor, motor racing past. And the handover of these cars might not be taking place in the mainland of the UK. Interesting stuff. And we've got a very, very exclusive, world exclusive, some would say, little snippet of what it's going to look like, this new project. And it's probably going to flash across your screen now. If you blink to them, sorry, that's it. You can't even rewind. That's, not, that's done. So I think that's it. I think we're done. We've, we've explored these amazing cars. So I would like to wrap it up and say thank you so much for showing us around. No I mean, I, I could sit here. In fact, we have sat here and talked about these cars for hours on end. But thank you so much for doing this. No problem. Thank you very and, much. And uh, we, for we look forward to seeing the next project when it's revealed. Not long. 1st of November. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay.